Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. Many of you already know that the Apple company is going to come up with their new model iPhone 15, but do you really want to buy it? Let's find out. The launch of iPhones is not less than a festival for tech enthusiasts as well as Apple fans. People line up to get their hands on one, and this effect is the same for all people around the globe. But upgrading to a newer model of iPhone every year is not really worth it, and that is where the problem lies. In this video, we will partition it into three parts that will address the three dimensions of buying an iPhone. Technical, social, financial. First, we'll dive into the technical aspect. Since its advent, iPhones have consistently been synonymous with innovation. The world was taken aback when Steve Jobs unveiled a mysterious 3-in-1 device that ingeniously integrated an iPod music player, an internet communication device, and a conventional phone. This groundbreaking innovation marked the birth of the original Apple iPhone. Since then, Apple has introduced a multitude of iPhones in the years that followed. But for the last few years, Apple has been facing huge criticism for the loss of innovation. According to the Apple website, if you compare the new iPhone 15 with two of its predecessors, you will hardly find much of a difference. While its competitors are experimenting with foldable screen smartphones and fast charging tech, Apple has hardly tried anything new. Even in the AI front, it seems to be lagging behind its competitors. Google Assistant has proved to be better than what Siri has to offer. In a popular YouTube channel, these comparisons were made and Siri was not at all the top performer. Furthermore, once you have owned an iPhone, chances are you'll continue to stick with it and be continuously prompted for further upgrades. With the iPhone's thriving secondary market, Apple deliberately deprecates or drains older phones with newer iOS upgrades, Gibbs 2017. On top of that, Apple releases fancy new features to prompt users into iOS upgrades, tapping into our day-to-day -day interactions by releasing iOS-only emojis, released in iOS 15.4, or introducing a personalized lock screen as seen in the latest iOS 16. But Apple claims that the new iPhone is made of titanium that is used in spacecrafts, so I guess it will come in handy on your next space trip. Now let's look into the social aspect of having an iPhone. Apple as a brand has been a brilliant marketing company. In 2013, Apple CEO Tim Cook said, the company's products are expensive because they do not want to reduce product quality because of price constraints. This makes all iPhone models exorbitantly expensive and due to its high price tag, this device is seen as a status symbol rather than just a gadget. People covet the technology that proudly bears the Apple logo, and they're happy to foot the bill for what's playfully known as the Apple tax. For those not in the know, the term Apple tax is a casual way of talking about the extra money one shells out when purchasing an Apple product. Piper Sandler, an American financial services company, has recently published intriguing research. It serves as an indicator of the social standing of today's younger generation, and it's not about fashionable attire. Rather, it revolves around dining out and savoring fine cuisine or investing in a high-end smartphone, particularly the coveted iPhone. This is why the demand for iPhones has remained consistently high. What's intriguing is that despite being fundamentally a smartphone designed to endure for a minimum of three, five years, whenever Apple unveils a new iPhone model at an event, it sparks a desire for the latest iteration, even if the alterations are subtle. This phenomenon is a testament to brand loyalty. In terms of statistics, Apple leads the pack among all mobile phone companies with an astonishing brand loyalty rate. In other words, if an iPhone user decides to switch their phone, they're highly likely to revert back to using an iPhone. Now let's look into the most important aspect that is finance. World of Statistics shared the league table of the comparative cost of buying an iPhone in a number of different countries around the world. While for some of the countries, these numbers are in lower single digit, for few of them, it is significantly high. If we focus on the viewer's country of our channel, it is 23% of yearly income in India and 2% in the US. Similar to other smartphones, the iPhone experiences a decrease in its market value over time. Typically, within the first year, an iPhone's value diminishes by around 15% and after four years, it can plummet by as much as 50%. Although it retains its value better than many Android counterparts, 
The iPhone's initial high cost means a substantial amount of money is still at risk of depreciation. So let's assume you are die-hard Apple fanboy, and you have had one iPhone of each new model. For our simplicity, we are taking into account that you took the iPhone, which is neither Pro nor Max in the later models. If you look at the columns, the first iPhone was launched in 2007. It was launched at a price of $199. If we adjust that price in terms of inflation in the US, it comes around $284. If we take the amount had it been invested in S&P 500 at that time, it would be around $914 in 2023. Similarly, all the iPhones that you have bought are taken into account. It shows that the amount that you have spent till date comes around $6,324. If we adjust the value of the phones in terms of inflation, it comes around $7,288. And if that money was spent in S&P 500, then it would come to approximately $11,000. Now, if we do the similar exercise in Indian rupees terms, the amount adds nearly 15 lakhs. Moreover, people tend to own it by using their credit cards. That adds up more to the cost if you are unable to pay it on time. This may lead to a debt trap. It's true that I have not taken the resale value of the old phones into my calculator, but I have also discarded the services cost that you pay for the subscriptions in the Apple ecosystem. The point being made here is the toll of frequently upgrading iPhones can have on your wallet in the long run. So is it that I am against the buying of an iPhone? No, that is not the message of this video. This video is all about bringing your attention towards mindful spending. You should know where your money is going. You should not be spending something just based on shiny object syndrome. Assess your technical requirements first, then make a choice. Buy something to please yourself, not to please others. And finally, always do an analysis of whether what you are buying today is going to cost you a big opportunity in the future. With this message, I will end this video. Sayonara.